Well, a picture is worth a thousand words. From portraits to scenery, each one has a unique story to tell. Today is Nature Photography Day. It's a day to promote conservation and protection of nature's beauty, both locally and globally. In honor of this national day, we want to bring in Don Wilson, a nature photographer and president-elect for the North American Nature Photography Association. She joins us from Estes Park, Colorado this morning with some tips on how to get that perfect outdoor photo app. Congratulations, by the way, and thanks for uh, coming on to talk about this this morning. What are Absolutely. some great subjects in nature to take pictures of for someone who's a beginner at photography? Should you just stick with like leaves and trees? No, I always recommend people enjoy and get out locally. Um, learn the local parks in your neighborhood, local streams, different things that are close to where you live. And those are the things that you can really master first. Spend a lot of time getting familiar with them, find out what wildlife is in your area, find out what streams might face east where you can get a really nice sunrise shot. Yeah. Um, or maybe a, a pond that faces west where you can photograph sunset. All right, Dawn, you specialize in high altitude photography. And when I was reading up on you, the first thing I thought is, how does she take the pictures in the winter when it's free? I mean, we're out there covering weather, you know, and our question is, what type of adjustments do you have to make? It's like, what type of gear do you have to have? Like, do you have the gloves where, you know, your little finger can come out of it and whatnot? So I do. I love the cold. I love um, high altitudes. In the summertime, high altitudes usually means I can see a sea of peaks here in Colorado. And that's one of the things I love, being out in the tundra, wide open tundra. The wildlife that lives up there is amazing. In the wintertime, it's a little bit more, even well, even in the summer at high altitudes. But in the wintertime, it's a lot more, not so much about the changes in my technique for photography, but more about my gear and keeping me safe and keeping me warm. So that means things like bringing snacks so I keep my calories up, um, so that I keep warm that way internally, as well as having good gloves, good hat, good, good jackets, things that'll, that'll keep me warm while I'm out there. I mean, these shots that we're showing while you're talking are jaw-dropping images. Look at those two bears. That is just spectacular. So you mentioned sunrises and sunsets. What are some tips that you have for people to capture those? So the biggest thing that I do is I always follow um, a couple of different weather apps so that I can keep an eye in the morning and determine if I should be getting up early. This time of year, sunrise is about 530. And if you want to get to a location, you're going to have to kind of budget you maybe an hour, hour and a half. And so that means I want to make sure that I'm going to make the best use of my time if I'm going to get up that early. Yeah. So I use weather apps, kind of follow um, what is the cloud, cloud pattern. Um, are we having full full sun? And that typically means there's not going to be any clouds in the sky. And that is a pretty lackluster sunrise or sunset photo. So what you want to look for is kind of a partially cloudy morning. And you also want to keep an eye on what the weather's doing to the east of you for sunrise or to the west of you for sunset. Because if you have a heavy cloud cover to the east of you for sunrise, that means that sun's not going to reach to where you are. And again, that's the flip side you're gonna get a pretty lackluster sunrise. You know, we only have about 30 seconds. Any quick tips for someone that wants to take pictures with their smartphone? So smartphones, I always recommend going wide. Um, try to get a really big, what they call an environmental portrait where maybe you have an animal in the foreground and a wider scene. But really you wanna make sure that, and the other thing is too with, with phones is there are some really great apps out there where you can actually edit right on the phone as well as try a time lapse. There's time lapse settings on cameras just get a really inexpensive tripod that'll yeah. hold your camera, your your phone, and set those things up for sunrise. It makes, yeah, it makes such a difference when you have that tripod there. Don Wilson, nature photographer and president-elect for the North American Nature Photography Association. We are in awe at your work, and thank you for those tips.